Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Trucker Money. This is number 69. For anybody new here, this is where we, we're, we're all truckers. We get together once a week and take a break from trucking, talk about something else. And my favorite thing happens to be personal finance. It's a hobby of mine. It's a passion. And <clears throat> I'm interested in building a, a, a life outside of trucking, an income stream outside of trucking, so that when I don't want to go trucking, or someday I don't want to do this anymore, we, we've got something else going on. And I encourage everybody else to do the same thing. And uh, give yourself a mental break once once in a while from trucking. And, and let's talk about something else. So side income, businesses, investing, it's all on the table here. My, my favorite thing happens to be other businesses and investing. We should talk about that. Any moves we made for the week, any, any other income we earned outside of trucking, uh, anything else we're trying to build outside of trucking. Uh, we talk about rental real estate. I uh, get some money coming in from that. Uh, here and there throughout the month and my personal favorite thing here is the uh, passive income dividend portfolio that that we do designed it uh, accidentally to pay out every week throughout the year although i did do some selling here over the summer and found out here i got my first week where where nobody paid me Mm, sad but had to happen sooner or later knew it was going to happen overall i don't really care uh, it doesn't matter when the money comes in. It matters that it does and, and uh, that it's going to and, and keeps on coming in. So we just reinvest that anyway to keep on uh, building for the future. So I did make some purchases this week. I did buy some more Kimberly Clark, ticker symbol KMB, some more uh, Royal Bank of Canada, ticker symbol RY, some more SCHD, the uh, uh, Schwab ETF, and some more Fidelity Balanced Fund. It's one of my uh, anchors of the portfolio. It's a, it's a balanced mutual fund. I've had it for many, many, many years. It's one of the larger positions, and it's just kind of a, a core holding there. It's a balanced fund, so it's uh, it's got some stocks in it. It's got some bonds in it. It's a fairly conservative fund. Just had it a long time, really happy with it. And I took this opportunity. Something I haven't bought in a very long time is some more Exxon Mobil trying to uh, increase a position in that. Actually, uh, going back to last week, I said that Stag Industrials paid me. Uh, they, they gave me the notification, but they didn't actually pay me till this week. So technically, I guess I did get paid on the 16th from Stag. And no dividend increases this week. Hey, uh, you can't have it all, right? A lot of people are asking, you're talking about on the topic, how do I get started? How do I get started investing how do i let's let's just back that up and talk about winning with money my thoughts on that are probably very different than everybody else's everybody will say you know you got to start just get some skin in the game 50 bucks a month start somewhere oh i i do agree with that i I think that's a a great idea incidentally not advice this is just my personal thoughts on it but i want to go to my personal experience And it probably doesn't jive with anybody else's. But I want to tell you when I finally started winning financially or winning with money or started getting in a way better position. And and I encourage everybody else to do this because I found it to be true without exception in, in anybody that I've talked to about it and that's done it. And the number one thing, I don't care... Uh, if somebody's telling you a hot stock, put money into, I don't care how much you invest. I don't care how often you invest. I don't care if you're a real estate guy, if you're a stock guy, if you're a crypto guy, I really don't care about anything about that because you know what? It's, it all can be good. It all can be bad. But the only, the number one thing that you have to do to start winning with money is change your relationship with money. And that's going to sound corny, but it is, you know, I used to say, I you know read all the books. Oh, money is eighty percent uh, habits, and behavior, twenty percent you know application. The more time that goes on, I'm convinced that it, it it's it's as high as ninety ten, maybe even ninety five five, because not only do I, I pay attention to what I do, but I, I pay attention to what others do around me. Now I just observe. I don't I don't really care what they do. This is their business. But how many people do you know that given more money, they only spend more money? Or given more money, they only get deeper in debt. Or it doesn't matter how much money you give them, they can't seem to save 50 bucks a month. That's tragic because for most of us in this industry, trucking is the best opportunity we will ever have to earn a a decent income. 
Because if you go trucking long enough, if you're trucking 20, 25 years, chances are your body's probably in tough shape after all that time of being sedentary. Your back's probably going to hurt. Your 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 neck, your your shoulders, whatever. Uh, you may you may have gained some weight. You know, a lot of people take care of themselves. That's that's awesome. That's that's awesome for you. Good good for you for doing that. And also, uh, trucking I've read is the number one paying job for high school educated men in America. Men with no higher education, trucking is the number one paying vocation. You know, think about that. And then you say, well, what would I do if I got out of trucking to make this kind of money? Sometimes we get upset. Oh, this money isn't enough. This isn't worth it. But it really can be a great opportunity if you find the right circumstance for yourself. Really opportunity to change your life. So why not do that? So let's go back to changing your relationship with money. There, there's some key points here that we have to work on to do that. Okay. Number one is you have to get over the fear of missing out. That if you don't partake in something, uh, and this this goes with the second thing of hype. If you don't even go out and get involved in the hype, you're missing out. Uh, a lot of times, you know, go back to the, the Bitcoin craze from a few years ago when people that were didn't know anything about it were mortgaging their houses to go and buy Bitcoin when it was on a tear, right? Didn't know anything about it. Just didn't knew they couldn't miss out on it, right? You go back to trucking a few years ago when trucking was so hot. Uh, you know, school teachers, uh, lawyers were getting together and buying trucks and putting them on the road because there was so much money in trucking. Didn't know anything about trucking. They just knew they couldn't miss out on trucking. We can't be falling for that. We just we just can't. And and tied into that is hype, right? When you see a meme stock, go back to if you look at uh, AMC. That's that, that's the one, right? A, a, AMC. I think that's right. Uh, everybody had to be GameStop. GameStop wasn't it? Something. Everybody had to be involved. They didn't know nothing about it. They didn't know nothing about the financials. Had to be involved in it because everybody on Facebook's talking about it. Everybody's making a ton of money. Well, they don't talk about how many people lost everything they own because they had to get on a hype and the chances are they get on the top and then there's nowhere to go but down. I will never put anything, any money in anything that is trendy or that is any kind of a meme or uh if, if, if I go and get my hair cut and the barber's telling me about this thing, most likely I don't want anything to do with it because by the time it gets that far, it's played out. The suckers are getting in at the top and it's about to ha- you're about to have the rug pulled out from underneath you. This is probably the biggest thing, okay? Getting control of your emotions with money before you can win, before you, you, you start making really good decisions. If I was to hand you a check for ten thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars, whatever money is a lot of money to you. If I was to hand you a check for that, how would that make you feel? The the second you put it in your hand, a lot of people I know would be like, "Oh my God, ten thousand dollars! I can go buy a car. I can do this. I buy a snowmobile. I can buy side by side. I, I can pay off my credit card. I can I can put money on a house. Uh, what am I going to do with this money? I got to do something with this money. Where am I going to put it? They just instantly go into a frenzy, an emotional frenzy of. I have to do something with this, or I can do something with this, or, oh, I'm going to go have a lot of fun. Oh, I'm going to go buy a car, right? They'll turn that $10,000 into $50,000 in debt, or they'll turn that $10,000 that they could have used to pay off their medical bills into uh, an ATV payment, right? Until you can have that amount of money, whatever amount of money scares you, maybe it's 500 bucks, whatever amount of money excites you, until you can get over the emotional part of it, and forget about it. You're, you're going to have a hard time winning with money. Here's a good exercise. Figure out whatever amount of money excites you, right? If it's a thousand bucks, we can always probably get our hands on a thousand bucks in a few months. Uh, put that money, put it in your purse, in your wallet, put it in a bank account. You're going to be thinking about it all the time. And say, man, this, you know, what am I going to do with this? Oh, I'm going to wait and I'm going to do this in six months. We're going to give, we're going to give this six months. That money's got to sit there. Uh, until you stop thinking about it and forget that that money even exists, you're not allowed to touch it. If it takes a year, if it takes two years, you're not allowed to touch that money until you just even forget that it exists. Because most people, it's a fact, most people are not comfortable having money. It puts them outside of their comfort zone. They can't, they can't think of anything else. They can't act rationally. So you have to be able to just forget that it exists. 
I got past this point in my life. This is me sharing my personal experience, right? I got past that point in my life. It doesn't excite me anymore. And that's when I started to make good decisions. You start to use your logic or research, knowledge instead of emotion. Um, I'm pretty sure I've held some pretty large checks in my hand. And it does nothing to me. It does. It's. I don't think it raises my pulse one one beat per minute. That's how I know I've conquered my emotional relationship with money. So I encourage you to figure out what is your issue with money and find a way to conquer it. Because until you do, it's going to be hard to win with money. You can do this. You can do Dave Ramsey's baby steps. It's it's all wonderful. It's fantastic. But until you change the way you feel about money it's it's really hard to and some things that are involved in that are uh, our patience right what did our grandparents do they they found uh something that worked and they and they they stuck with it and they just they gave it they gave it the 20 years it needed to become what it needed to be they don't have to go and find the next crypto coin and hit it big all at once right they're able to find a plan and stick to it it's patience they're able to block out the noise they didn't care when uh, Nintendo, you know, what, think back 40 years ago, right? What's what was the craze? The computers, right? And Nintendo, they didn't care because they were they were in McDonnell Douglas, right? They were in Boeing. They were in these things, uh, Colgate Palmolive, that they knew are going to be here a long time, and, and could lay out a solid game plan. They blocked out the noise. They kept doing what they were doing, and it allowed them to win long term. How many, you know, people do we hear of dying? Uh, these secret millionaires that nobody. You ever hear about that dude that collected uh, like eight hundred thousand dollars in pennies? You know, people would just come up and give them their, they knew he collected pennies, they'd give them their pennies, he'd pick them up on the street for like 50 years. And you know, recently he was on the news, he, they, he went cashing his pennies, he had $800,000 worth of pennies. Right? He didn't have to go hit it big on the next new great thing, he made it collecting pennies. And, and you can too. That's that's why I say it almost doesn't matter, that part of it was put your money in pennies, put your money in, in stock, in real estate. It, that part of it is, is less significant than the mental part and you conquering your emotions and following a plan. And then along with that is the herd mentality. You see a lot of that, and, and I'm not against crypto, don't get me anyway, but you see a lot of that in, in the crypto market with the herd mentality. You just have to, you have to find a new thing that's going to blow up and, and catch that. Or But they never talk about how many people lose a lot of money, right? The herd mentality, Tesla. You know, got to have everything you have in Tesla because that's, that's the new great, thing that's what the herd is doing that's what everybody's doing usually the money is going against what the herd is doing because the herd runs something out till the end until they fall off the cliff right so there's she see a herd of sheep in the in the movies go over the cliff uh because everybody else in front of them did that people at the back of that herd just keep running the sheep at the back of that herd just keep running right well you got to be the one that stops and thinks this is a herd i should be following there's a grassy field about 100 yards back i could go back there and and eat. I can follow these guys and run off that cliff. Right? You got to break the herd mentality. Oftentimes, uh, the, the, the best opportunity is to do the exact opposite of what the herd is doing. When everybody else is, oh, the sky's falling. Uh, eventually, uh, things are going to bottom. You're going to see bottom, and you can be the one standing there. When everybody else sold on the way down, you're here ready to buy because you weren't following the herd. Right? When everybody else has got a big hype and driving things up to the top, you got to be the one to think, hmm, there's a, there's a limit here somewhere. Right? I made, I tripled my money. Maybe it's time to get out and find another opportunity. It's greed to go along with that. So anyway, you would just have to find your, your path. Right? Not follow somebody else's path. Not even follow my path. Uh, find your path. Find the one that works. And stick to it with a long-term plan. You can. There's a lot of get-rich-quick things out there. There's also a lot. You never hear about the get-poor-real-quick things, do you? The the guy that lost, you know, saved up fifty thousand dollars and lost it all in, in uh, whatever, right? You never hear about those stories. You only hear about the people that hit it big. Well, uh, a lot of baseball players made a really long-term careers, twenty-year careers out of hitting nothing but doubles and in singles and triples, did they? They don't have to hit a home run every time. But you end up in the Hall of Fame. Uh, so, uh, do that. That's, that's a way more likely to succeed plan. Uh, you'll learn a lot. You'll be a better person by, by conquering your emotions about money. You will also figure out a lot of other things in your life, mature, grow up, be, uh, be a different person in life in general. Um, 
So anyway, just sharing my personal experience. Everybody take care. Have a good week. Uh, be safe. We'll see you next time.